Actually, I just want to see if you can guess how many fingers are rounding up. Close your eyes. Okay. Just, do that one just tell me when your fingers are up. Okay. They're up. Oh, they're up. Okay. Three. Stop it. Oh! <laughs> Hello, world. Yes, exactly. Welcome. Welcome to... <laughs> Welcome. <laughs> Welcome to Conversations with Fabulous People. My name is Mike Myershiro. I'll be your host. And on today's show, we have... I'll be the fabulous person. <laughs> a fabulous <laughs> person who will be to. joining us today. And this if you is... wait right here, I'll go get her. <laughs> <laughs> this is Carrie Lloyd. She is a pastor, an author, TV personality, Am I? Are you? Oh, we should make that something, shouldn't we, at some point? You know, I think I'd have your resume down by now. I know. I haven't got my own resume down. I'm Real estate pegoon? Oh, wait, that should be a new one as well. You should add I'd that like to the list. I'd like to be. Podcaster? I'd like to be the Joanna Gaines of Reading. So anyway, we wanted to just invite you into having a conversation with us. Uh, we don't know what we're going to talk about. That is genuine truth. Do we? No. We have no prompts. We have no ideas. We just wanted to... Put cameras on us and let's see, see what, what happens. happens. Exactly. What if it's just like a tumbleweed and just we just literally freeze? We have nothing. What if to things say? just get stuck in our bush? <laughs> <laughs> my, my team oh, couldn't recover. Wow. It's all they talk about from that You're day right. now. I you know. Like, I know. You. It's your fault. I know. Well, that's because you have a very voluminous mustache. Is that why? Yeah. I was at Carrie's house the other day. We were shooting a Q&A session with her team and my team and just trying to like, extract quality questions on some content that I'm teaching. And at one point I was talking about using us as an, an analogy. We were, we were sheep, right? And as you're walking through as the sheep, you're not always aware of the burrs and the sticks that get stuck in your bush. And I was talking about your wool and Emily's like, your wool? And I was like, your wool. And then Carrie, who was in the room watching... Lost just, it. She started laughing and then just I, laid down because she was I done. I had to. It's she important for me to be horizontal. And which, which gave permission to every other person in the room to then lose it and let that be a thing. And we couldn't recover for a good like 12 seconds. Ever. We're still not recovering. Oh, I and mean, that's all they talk about now from that day is the fact that you laughed at the bush comment. I and know. That, I should have said, well, it is my fault. But <laughs> you're partly to blame for that as well. Anyway, so being a leader in the ministry realm, yeah. someone in the Christian world, there isn't a lot of levity in religious circles, right? No. At least when you're talking about and engaging in ministry, it's all somber and serious and intense. For me, personally, the more healed I got, the more fun and jovial and non-serious I became. I come from a culture which doesn't allow you to be emotionally expressive. <laughs> England, <laughs> England's very sort of, you know, right. just, the Queen Mother, even during the war, the Queen Mother went, um, just keep busy. <laughs> That's the way that we were to deal with a world war, was to keep busy. Well, I think the war itself is quite a busy thing on your agenda. So, but that's kind of what that, the grandmother of our nation told us just to keep busy. So when it comes to emotional expression or anything like that, we can't be, we can't be high as a kite and hilariously on cloud nine. And we can't be too depressed. We can't just numb. That's the ideal. That's the most mature response is to be numb and not really I think that's respectable I think so it means that you're strong and you are resilient <laughs> unfaced so that's why I moved to America <laughs> <laughs> wait so like over there do they judge Americans for being out of oh, control and they're obnoxious just like, oh, oh god so dramatic <laughs> even in a funeral like something where you're like no this is per this person I cannot replace for the rest of my life a bit of a journey. I, I like the idea of a bit of wailing. I like some of these cultures. That and that would be hire. inappropriate in your culture. Inappropriate, but it's sort of like, you know, just it's very selfish. If you're grieving for more than six days, it's very selfish. It's very selfish. Really? Is that real? Yeah. Wow. Maybe it's just my own family. I don't know. <laughs> it might be the Lloyd clan. I know, it perhaps. could be. It could be. And understandably, I think if we, we kind of explode on the other end because we keep it all down and then we just have these huge explosions. So you can't actually, it, it's very hard to find a sort of happy response of being able to react and have the moments of weeping in the garden of Gethsemane moments like Jesus. We, we don't really allow any of that room to, and so therefore we never really give space to healthily respond to things, we just explode all of a sudden for no reason whatsoever. We're talking about British culture, <laughs> but also like church culture, like even we're talking about even in America, yeah. in the church there's such a stiffness, there are even like sometimes some jokes that would be funny for the average person, then at home we're all laughing about it, but at church. Yeah. Serious. 
and I'm not to say that there's not a standard that we should be upholding yeah. or like something that we're ascribing to, but yeah. or aspiring to, but. And there's reverence, I think, as well, that I think sometimes we get mistaken for reverence and seriousness. Totally. So, so there's definitely a moment where people are joking around. I'm like, oh no, dude, this is not, this is not that moment. Bro. <laughs> Bro, whoa, hey, hey. <laughs> there was some celebrity who had posted up a video about her cat. I think there was a sleep and its paws were like this and she was just playing with was the paws. Was it Taylor Swift? No, it was Kate Beckinsale. Okay. She, and I just saw it and underneath, someone had commented from obviously a Christian had commented underneath saying, repent now for you must and was like trying to make her saved in this moment and, and someone underneath wrote, dude, this is a cat video. Come down. <laughs> and I was like, that's kind of, that is kind of how the church can sometimes like just not being aware of your surroundings. Why do you moment. think? Why do you think people get there that they that that would be a response they would have to? A well, cat it video? suggests that the, for me, I'm like, what makes you think that there haven't been conversations? Kate might have had these conversations or picked up a few books. She might have actually picked up the Bible once in the movie. She's videoing her cat, her Persian cat that is asleep. I don't know how this is going to work. I believe in, in the Lord still having to this road experiences with people. It doesn't all have to be just down to my agenda. And if I'm missing the moment to understand someone's journey, I don't open up a conversation that's actually inviting. I'm actually looking like I've just got an agenda and I need you to be saved in this moment. Otherwise, it almost becomes more fearful from a Christian point of view. And it doesn't feel very trusting that they've even asked these questions. So that's why I think pro the prophetic is very interesting to me. Because it's the, it's the woman at the well who was clearly already outcast by her own well and her own local community. So he intentionally went to a place where he knew that she was already outcast. And then jumps over this whole reputation mark of not, you know, men not being able to speak to women in public. So she's already stunned by his actions, which already speak way more volumes than anything else she's ever heard before. And then he starts talking to what her life is like and she's asking questions like, I don't understand how to get satisfied. And so that's when it, that's when everything changes. She becomes one of the greatest evangelists for her town. But I think if he'd gone in with a very different approach without having a conversation that makes them feel loved and known and seen and all the, all the workings that we're talking about, then it's different, you know. Do you love how serious we got? Yeah, I mean... I knew this was gonna happen. <laughs> I knew it. I mean, you, are, you and I can't like resist the temptation, right? I know. We gotta, All right, like, I've got a question some... for you then. If you were in a plane crash, <laughs> what? the captain says, listen guys, it's not looking good. Okay, yeah, that's a different story. <laughs> I'm not sure we're gonna make it. Ooh, let's play a game of would you rather. Would you <laughs> preach your gospel to an entire plane even though they might go, can we have the turn on back there because we're actually trying to give some instructions. <laughs> <laughs> or... Would you pick up the phone and call your family? I thought we were supposed to still stay white. <laughs> oh my god. And it's really um, heavy, would you rather? Mom. Okay. Bye. You'd call your mom. Thank you. I'd probably call my mother. Yeah. I did want to ask you about the animal thing. What was the animal? Of one? all the animals in the world, if they could all talk, which one do you think would be the rudest? Would be and the rudest. Why? <laughs> I think one of those dogs with the really big jowls. Um Pitbull? Those bait no, the Beethoven dogs. With the big droopy uh, eyes and the big eyes, well, what are they those might be. I don't know. What about those cats without like fur? Oh, you know who would be really yeah, they sphinx cats. They'd be so. They're like yeah, they're already looking they're just so. Fish. They're just mad at life. <sighs> I'd be mad at I life mean, yeah. if I didn't have fur going on. And everyone else did. <laughs> It'd be like someone saying you can never wear clothes for the rest of your life. But everyone else gets. <laughs> everyone to. else gets. <laughs> but you can't. You can't. I might not be rude. I might, be, I might be brave. You would just Bold. embrace it. You would just yeah, spend just... most of your time in Hugh Connolly's feeling like with other spins cats. And you know those massive kangaroos that are like built? No. Like really. What? Like they, so biceps they're like, or they're just built like boxers. Mm -hmm. I'll find you a picture. Which is, I wish picture? I had one right now. I wish there was one right here. They're like huge. They're like rest, they're built like wrestlers. I've never. In Australia. Don't they all have like tiny little arms? Like T Rex arms? No, these ones are like what massive. I had a hedgehog for like four lesion. years, and you did you just him? pick it up off the side of the road, or did you? No, actually... we, my mom's friend actually like breeded them. Oh, she bred them. She yeah, because there's them. a bit of a they they a little bit extinct in England. Well, no, they're not extinct, but they're getting on the preserve list. I've got and... a friend who's got a hedgehog hospital. 
Literally, hedgehogs. So all these ones that might get run over or hit by a car or different, or they've been abandoned because they were going to be lost. Hedgehogs. She's, she's Only got hedgehogs. Literally just, just hedgehogs. <laughs> literally just this little barn of hedgehogs. And then they all escape and they all try to, because they think they're in prison, but right. we're trying to help them out. <laughs> <laughs> Anytime you get near them, or at least the hedgehog we had, you would always hiss and like hide his head. No. He would hiss at you. <laughs> I had a possum like that the other day. The girl from the garage next door, we were all trying to get tons of stuff out. We'd only just got the keys open to this place. Just just bought next door. And um, my one of my one of my girls who's been helping me renovate the houses the, the whole summer, she's very calm, very chill. Not easily frightened, doesn't okay. oh, doesn't okay. scare you. This possum basically runs some something just goes straight across her feet and she loses across it. Across her feet. Screaming. <laughs> Her head off. In the dark? And then everyone just runs from the garage, <laughs> leaving her alone. And she's like standing on some random multi gym that we found in there. And she's like, ah! and she's like, I don't even know what it is, I don't know where, but it's large and it's furry and it's hissing at me right now. And it was sitting under this old refrigerator. Anyway, we had to chase it out. And it was the most terrifying thing because I don't understand, I don't understand American <laughs> wildlife. And then I turn around and Lila's holding a frying pan as if to that's going to gonna help. Well, she might hit it. That's, yeah, but then she was also halfway down the street by the end of it. I'm like, the possum <laughs> is a block away. It's With like, her friend. She's like, I'm just protecting myself. I, that's clear. You're not helping anyone else at this just point thank in time. You for that. I watched this video of like this conspiracy theory of like these little creatures that would live in people's homes. And so on YouTube, I'd watch these like clips of people and they're like doing a normal... This is a homemade video, just hanging out, whatever, and this little person starts, like, moving in the room. And as soon as the humans realize that it's there, they stop. <laughs> There's this moment of realization. It's really quiet, like, quick little moment. I'm crying. From That's it. genius. And then immediately, everyone just screams. <laughs> <laughs> Lost it. I think that I do actually want to spend one year where all I do is creating setups where I just terrify everyone. An entire life year of setting up practical jokes. To terrify people? I would love yeah. that. I will... Sometimes, I mean, even with stuff, like, even with the stuff at Strive 3, there is, I had a friend that <laughs> honestly went in Starbucks and reversed into the Starbucks on purpose. They reversed and went, I'm so sorry, I, I got the wrong end. And so I guess I'm just going to go backwards to make the order. I hope that's okay. You're going to have to reach a bit further. <laughs> He's like, okay. And so he literally reverses the whole way around both windows. It's all these other guys. Is he filming it? No, he oh, just, he did, just it did it. Because he just didn't. He was bored. And that's what he decided to do. And she was, there's that. Or the same guy goes past the drive through speaker way too quickly and goes, I have a great latte. Thanks very much. She's like, what? What? I missed it. I missed it. He's going far too fast. Just to see, just to throw them off. I love that stuff so much. <laughs> so those kind of things. Well, you're kind of expecting just a normal moment. But like the most ridiculous things take place instead. I worked at Bethel Media off Caterpillar for a couple of years. <clears throat> and Sarah worked in the same area as me. And she, well, she and I worked on the same team for a while. And then she moved to another department. So I knew her really well. And yeah. she was like one of the jumpiest people I'd ever met. Like you just do something <laughs> quick or whatever. And she's like jumps. And you're like... <laughs> And so I got to this point where I just started filming and I started like intentionally scaring her and she would jump and scream and drop things and throw them or whatever at the slightest. And sometimes I didn't even say anything. I just go, <laughs> <laughs> freak out. So I filmed her and I literally got probably 60 something videos of her freaking no. out. Seriously. And then I compiled them into like a minute and a half clip of just her getting scared over and over and over again. And it was so good we played it at the Bevel staff Christmas party and That's we all watched genius. her getting and then everyone just hated me afterward they all laughed and clapped <laughs> and then just hated me I got so much negative press from she that because really? everyone thought that I was like such a villain for like victimizing this poor innocent woman in her workplace and I'm like did you see the videos though that's so funny. Like, I would literally just be like... Did she laugh after or did you cut it where she's just screaming all yeah. the time? Only her screaming all the time. No, no she, there's she no any, laugh. like, they can't she see She was it. like, oh, it's you. Yeah. See, they that's the problem, that. you see. Ellen well, I, DeGeneres I mean, does it on her show. She does it with people all the time. But then she shows them, like, laughing about yeah. it. Yeah. Sometimes they get really angry. They do. 
Like, they go to this hatred murder place exactly. for, like, just a split second, and then they come back because they realize that there's still people watching. What if someone, what if you, uh, your reflex was to, she should just punch them, and then they're dead? Like, it's a very violent scene. Actually, Sarah happen. actually ended up doing this. She would, I'd scare her, and she'd go, ah! <laughs> like, literally no, ten out of those things, she would clap, just, like, by her face. She would start clapping. I'm like, why are you clapping? Is it part of, sort of, like, the journey of deliverance? You know when we go, <laughs> just, just, Come just out. Go, yeah, exactly. Be gone. So, Maybe that's probably it. Maybe she's probably trying to keep the demons she's out. She's very spiritual, and <laughs> even when she's thrown off guard. What is the biggest practical joke that anyone's ever played on you? On me? Yeah. One time, I had a couple roommates who were in first year, and they pranked somebody, and so someone came and pranked all of our cars and my car as well. So they put chocolate, melted chocolate into diapers, and stuck them all over my car, <clears throat> and shoved chocolate, melted chocolate underneath the handles. Mm. And I was really upset. And I actually was in a place in my life where I was like just learning about the spiritual authority that I processing? had. processing? No, not yet. I touched my handle because I had to go to work and I felt, I was like, what? And I looked and there's chocolate, there's poop on my fingers. And I was like, <laughs> and my immediate thought was to curse whoever did this. I was immediately yeah. about to just like curse them, like speak something horrible over them. Yeah, so, and I, yeah. I fully was convinced it would happen. And I was like, oh my gosh. What am I doing? And I like, got control of myself. I was like, whoa, we're not going to do that. I was like, interesting that that was my first go-to <laughs> was to just like speak a curse over this person. Wow. But, okay, I'm definitely anyway. not doing practical jokes on you. Well. Because I might be cursed. I mean, if there's like a mess that I have to clean up and you're out and you're not even like enjoying the reaction, then I just me. feel mostly crapped. Yeah, you will be cursed. <laughs> curse on your house and, or I don't know, whatever the curse, curse on Curse on your houses, yeah. Exactly. On all of them, right. Just... Diarrhea for my, everybody. <laughs> <laughs> I did one on a, a, a guy back in the day, this is like six years ago, and he had decided, he was very proud of this sort of handlebar moustache that he just got, and it didn't... He just got it. He just got He's it, and he like, was being very, like, <laughs> schmoozy about the whole thing. He loved it. He was, like, showing it to everyone, took pictures of himself, like, constant selfies about himself. And we were like, what are you, what are you doing? <laughs> Now, this is your branding, but this wasn't his branding. Like, it wasn't... I, it was almost like he was trying to isolate everyone with his hand on one that. <laughs> so my friend ended up one day sketching his profile picture. I know, you naturally want to play with it. I wanted to play with mine, apparently. <laughs> <laughs> Let's play with ours. Yeah. I would... If I had your moustache, I'd want to play with it all the time. There's a lot of self-control happening over here. I did ask you, actually, once... I think the first time I ever met you or we did any kind of filming I was asking you million dollars or your moustache right now you actually were trying to figure out what the, the price was how important was you started it? like 5,000 or something right and then you yeah going, and, and then like, you were like no I'm sorry and then you were like well I can grow it back a million bucks four months later it's back done let's do and it and I'm like no you can't grow it the whole agreement right. of the one million dollar was that it's never coming back it never comes back but then you get a hundred well, a million dollars not a hundred million a million just a million you wouldn't do it would you I don't know. Probably. I probably would. I mean, that's, you can do a lot with a million dollars. You know what I mean? We just add, you just have fake ones. Just yeah, really just well designed. Every morning, just every real four human days hair. <laughs> Wait, you were going to talk about how someone okay, did Okay, so I, so basically my friend had sketched out oh, his, right. his Facebook picture had like him with sunglasses and a hat and this and the thing. So she sketched it. As if it was like, we're looking for this person. Have you seen? <laughs> and so I went, I have an idea. And so basically, we printed 100 pictures of this picture with the words wanted. And then we planted them everywhere across the city. In public? <laughs> yes. So we would find out where he was coming out of work or where. And then we would put like five on window screens in these different. Of cars? Next to or his like businesses? Car, on oh. cars and car parts. <laughs> And then we put it on different people's houses and did it. And for about three weeks, he was going insane. He was losing it. He, did he know it was you? No. He, he didn't, didn't know who was doing it? Well, I think he might have had an inkling, but then he so enjoyed the attention that the moustache was What do you mean getting. he was losing it? Losing it as in like, who is, who is doing this? Like, they do, like he really didn't like being kept out on a secret. And so our confessional, we, do, we took a confessional photograph. And it was, one of the girls was holding, it was four of us. One of the girls was holding up a picture. Another girl was holding up a razor. <laughs> Once you have this thing, like, things change a little bit. In what it's way? It's hard to explain. That's just kind of vulnerable, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> Is it really? 
I had a goatee for like two months. I just wanted to see what my face was capable of because I can't grow a full beard. So <laughs> I, I just... want to see what my face is capable of. So it's amazing. We should put that on the mic board. <laughs> I want to see what my face is capable of. And then just have a ton of different pictures. So I had a goatee. It was actually pretty full. And then Seth Dahl saw me one day at the kids camp and he was he had a mustache at the time and he waxed it out and curled it, whatever. Oh. He, he looked at me, he stood up in the presence of all these kids and they all stopped and looked at me and he was like, he reached toward me, and I was walking toward him, and I was like, is this, is this happening right now? This is a magic moment. And I kept, like, getting close to Seth, and he was like, two months, give me two months. And he held my face lovingly, and I was like, okay. <laughs> I don't know, he did something to me. He's like, you have a glorious mustache. So anyway, a few days later, we were joking. A few days later, I decided I'm going to shave the whole thing off. My sister yeah. was visiting, we are going to go get sushi. And so I shaved off the whole bottom and left the mustache as a joke. So I showed my roommate and her, and they're like, ha, 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 no. And then I like tweaked up the sides a little bit and they stayed and I was like, what? Look at this. And they're like, yeah, I'm like, I'm keeping it. They're like, no, you're not. I was like, yes, I am. She's like, I'm not going into public with you looking like that. And I was like, well, you have a choice to make because it's not going anywhere. So she... Did you, did you actually want to keep it or no. were you now in a space of like people are being so cruel and isolating with you and they're like, I'm proving you. Not cruel. It was more like they were so uncomfortable and there was such a reaction. They were that all so dramatic so that I was like, this is way too much fun to let go of. So I just kept it for the de- for the night. I was just going to keep it for dinner. Yeah. So she and I went to dinner, and she's like, I can't believe that you're... And she just finally got over it. We took a selfie. It was fun. And then... And several people were like, whoa, whoa and they're just like comment on the mustache. I'm like, thank you, yeah, whatever. Or they're laughing, or, you know, it's ironic. And then I was like, you know what? I'm not ready to let this go. So I went to work the next day, and everyone's like, what? Uh? And then like four days go by, I'm like, this is way too much fun. I'm getting way too right, much attention. Right, right. I'm not that's getting true, rid of this. That's true. And then four, or four years later, here we are. <laughs> and I haven't let go of it since. And how, do you, how many times a day do you get someone referencing the mustache? Probably three on average, depending on how much, on how, how many if I go in public or not. What? Crikey. Yeah, when I travel, so I remember. I this is not annoying. You're not like, oh, I've heard this No, before. I, I think I enjoy the attention, so. Sometimes it's like, like one time when the fire was happening in Reading, we were in Roseville and we were in a mall and I found out a good friend of mine, their house had burned down. I saw a picture on his Facebook and I was so shocked. I couldn't believe it because I'd been at their house a bunch. Like it was a beautiful home. Yeah. I was shocked. And so I just started crying in the middle of mm. this walkway at the mall. And I was surprised at like my reaction, but it had been like probably 24 hours at this point of just all this trauma. Yeah. And then I saw that and just like made it real mm. to a degree that I wasn't prepared for. So I was crying, and my, my friends are just standing there waiting, like, knowing that I'm having a moment, just kind of there with me, and I'm just, like, letting it happen. And this stranger walks by me. They don't see my face very much, and they just go, sweet mustache, bro. And I was like, tears streaming down my face. I'm like, thank you. You know, because I was just so used to it. Like, there are moments like that where it's like, people don't... Read the you know. room, guys. <laughs> I mean, I didn't... I, Maybe he was trying to console you, and that was... And that's, he that's had no what, idea. Was he British? Because that's what Brits would do. I actually had a moment a year ago where I was like, I may never shave it. I was like, how did I get here? But, like, I actually was open to the idea. I actually think I look better with it than without it. Yeah, I've never seen your face without it. I know, so if you I saw don't... me without it, you'd be like, oh, God. Then... I'd be like one of those Sphinx cats. I'd be really rude, I'd too. just be looking at your top lip the entire time. <laughs> okay, wondering up here. So up here. <laughs> <laughs> I remember the day that men started to look at me differently. Everything had developed overnight. So, everything. So, using hands, <laughs> all, furry, of all of it. And I, and I used to be, like, a tomboy. I used to play with the boys and... Literally just play football and do all the boy things. Lego, wasn't interested in Barbie. You like, played Legos? Total tomboy, yeah. Interesting. Still do. Actually, someone gave me some Lego the other day and I was like, thank you. So it's still in there. But yeah, I remember the day that things changed and I was actually really gutted. I was really gutted that the guy started to look at me like I was a girl, not a guy. You didn't want them to Because I lost all my buds. Because it, oh. Now they were like thinking about, you know... Other things. Dating. Yeah. And I'm like, oh no, this is awful. Everything's gone to crap. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> that's what it felt like. Like, can we just play soccer? Oh no, we can't. Okay. Yeah, people used to tell me my older sister was beautiful. Oh my gosh, and I had my friends who would be like, dude, your sister's hot. I'm like, you can't say that to me. <laughs> Never say it again. You know yeah. what I mean? Like, you don't say that to you. I think. Anyway, I was like, I don't, whatever. And then she and I, she moved away for a few years. She and I went on a trip together. We mm. traveled together. We were walking to the airport. Or stores, or we'd go wherever together, and I notice everywhere we went, random dudes would just stare at her. And I'm like, No. Can you see that I'm also here? And so you, you were jealous I mean? of the attention. I wasn't jealous. <laughs> <laughs> everyone's looking at her and not me. I'm gonna grow a mustache. <laughs> no, I was just like, I didn't get it. I'm like, Why are? Why is everyone just consistently staring at her? I was like, Do you know that people stare at you? She's like, What? 
Like, yeah. dude, these dudes are staring at you. You don't see yeah. that? She's like, oh, I don't know, maybe. I know how she feels. I haven't known <laughs> <laughs> But it's a thing, and it's, like, pretty it obvious. I'm like, gentlemen, can you at least just have, can you at least pretend like you're in control of yourself? But you know just that, try. So, so women have a wider per- peripheral vision. Do you know this? I think that's very sexist. It's true. <laughs> it's an actual true statement. I don't care if it's sexist. Oh, I'm kidding. It's what? a true thing. How is that, really? Our, our vision, so, I mean, I... I Feel like we should even test it out now. I can see to there, so it should be 180 for me. I can see to. Oh, you were lying. Here. I'm trying to figure where <laughs> it goes away. Here. I love how you were like, oh, that's exactly the same. And here. Okay. Is that really male of me to only be able to see this much? So I can so see. If you if you have to look straight. You can't like. I am. But I can't see anything you're doing. Oh, I can see all of what you're doing, but I can't. I don't know. Are we doing we're the same exactly thing? the same. <laughs> my point is being ruined in this Women moment. can see more. Okay, well, my, I'd heard, <laughs> but clearly it's not true. <laughs> you know how guys will, might check out a woman in the street? They shouldn't, obviously. But they might appreciate a beautiful woman. And so they'll turn and look, and the, and the girlfriend or the wife will go, uh, I saw that, thanks. But women might just acknowledge beauty anyway, just because it's beautiful, beautiful, beautiful. So it's just an acknowledgement. I don't think it has to go with anything. But I don't think acknowledging our, it's wrong or bad. No, but when you can't stop staring at them. You yeah, well, the, the manage yourself. Right, the manage exactly, look. yeah. Oh. That, Appreciate fine. it. Let's move on with well our lives, shall we? I suddenly go, well done. Well done, Mel. That was a, you were in a good mood. Okay, so. But I'd heard peripheral vision for women was wider than a man. So, so we can look at people without them nosing we're looking at them whereas men have to turn a bit because they're peripheral vision I think it's more of an attention span as... thing don't you think versus like physiology like for your actual ability do you to think see. it's probably the way they use their attention right like women can supposedly multitask and men That's are more true. like task focused we we'll always time. think we're looking out for the threats all the time for our nest interesting it's one of our six uh, our sixth for... sense right well, like, paranoia. you think a female has just been very kind and very friendly, and she's like, she was definitely trying to crack onto you, and she's like, what are you talking about? And she was very pleasant, she was very polite. No, no, definitely cried. The, the till of the hit, the play with the hair, the ha ha ha, every time you say something funny. <laughs> and the guys are like, what? How did you, I'm, what are you talking about? She was just being very polite. I don't know what you're talking about in this moment, but there's this thing that has this sort of sixth sense built in and, and making sure that our nest is not threatened. Do you think it's a conditioned thing, or you're, you're all born that way? I think some more than others, I would say. And then, of course, it can get completely distorted and go completely on override and everyone gets very insecure. Mm. But it's exactly the same. That's me. Isn't it? This is me. Actually, no, yours a little bit fo- Two. Funny forward. Four. I can see above. <laughs> You're raising your fingers. <laughs> so you know. Well, you know what? Here. Close your eyes. And no, here, me, do this. No, now you hold, it, you hold it. Close with. your eyes and tell Two. me. Yeah, exactly. Because <laughs> you're raising your own right, fingers. Right, so you raise All your right, I'll do it. Kay. No, because you're looking. Oh, yeah, sorry. Close your I eyes. I can go. Close your eyes. I'm not going to be able to see your fingers. Let's see if we can do this in the prophetic realm. <laughs> do it. Two. Wait, are you ready? Three. I don't know. You're counting down. What does that mean? I don't know. <laughs> I'm like trying to I thought we're, we're testing peripherals right so now. So you don't, yeah. So I need to look this way, and then you're going to hold up numbers. I'm going to see how far away Actually, you I just want to see if you can guess how many fingers are holding up. Close your eyes. Okay. Just do that one Just first. tell me when your fingers are up. Okay. They're up. Oh, they're up. Okay. Three. Stop it. Oh! <laughs> Is that's because my I, peripherals are so good. But you can see through your own eyelids. Yeah, that's the thing Asians can do. No, they can't. My eyes are open right now. You think that my eyes are closed, but they're not. This is my normal field of vision, and right now I'm just like pushing my eyes open like crazy. (laughs) I'm just exerting a lot of effort right now. I think my peripherals are just very masculine and bigger than Did you have your eyes open then when I did that? No, I didn't. All right, let's try again. Oh, man. Let me know when when you're ready. Ready. A one. No. (gasps) I'm zero. That's three. (laughs) three. You were going to trick me. If I said three, it was zero. Yeah, if I said zero, it was three. I would have exactly. never said zero. No. Okay, close your eyes. It's your you? turn. No, I don't want to do this game. I'm not as good as this. I don't have the thing that you can do. Because you're white. Yeah. <laughs> okay. You ready? I'm your eyes are totally it. open. You're going right. to do a trick. Called no tricks. I'm not I'm okay. not tricksy. I'm ready. I'm ready. Do it. Five. That was close. 
Oh, the thumb. I was not expecting your opposable thumb. Yeah, I tricked you on that. The thumb. Was did down. you put it up? No, And I then didn't. you put it down? I tricked you in the fact that I just didn't use my thumb. Okay. This is what you wanted for the content of your videos. This is exactly what I was looking <laughs> How for. How many fingers so am I we're doing this. <laughs> Wait, so do we settle though that we have the same amount of peripheral? I, I, wanted, no, so. I wanted to test this. Hold up numbers and let's see if I can see it in... I can be looking this far. I can't see your hand. Come closer toward okay. me. Feel the vision? No, I can't see it. Okay. I'm going to say... <laughs> yeah, I can, I'm guessing still. Keep going. Are you serious? Yeah. Okay. Is it two? Yeah. Okay. Four. Yeah. Yeah. That's my purple right there. It's pretty good, right? So it's the is same that, as It's like woman. female status? It's the same. It must be. No, I feel like we should just, just test down another big one. What else <laughs> really? is true? What else can women do that men can't? Let's talk about it. Oh, no. This is a terrible <laughs> question. I think that sixth cent thing is a real thing. I think it's probably like conditioned, like, I think men could probably learn to, to think that way. Because I think I probably do think that way somewhat, like more than a typical Yeah, I mean, do. you're a different ball game. Why? <laughs> because you teach people about the Zen and navigating right. a spiritual but I s So you've trained that in yourself for a long but, time. And I still have... Bad days. Maleness. Does discerning a spirit change if you're a man or a woman? Obviously regardless of your own self being involved in the journey. But you said, because you have madness, things change. Well, I mean, like, I'm still a dude. Uh -huh. So we can't say that's a female trait. They don't necessarily own it if I can do it, right? Right. I'm not a girl. Yeah. Yeah, I think that the discernment thing, I think the gift works the same, but your soul, the way it interacts with it and what it does with it, because the gift comes with benefits, right? It brings insight and, yeah. and clarity. And so the things that women want to know about versus the things that my, men yeah, want to know about, true. they're going to use it differently. So you might develop... A relationship with the gift mm. in a specific way I don't think the gift changes based on your gender I think your priority and socialization changes how you use it or your condition that's good you know what I mean yeah it's conditioning I think it's yeah yeah we need to move on this is too serious <laughs> so you're not allowed any serious no, it I, you know I think actually we are allowed that so most of the time whenever I've had any feedback about my books they go on Su surprisingly funny I was expecting I was sort of picking it up as a self-help book. I is it weird for guys to read your books? No, I actually love it when they I do. I wanted to talk to you about your books. Even when I was writing my first book, I said to myself, I might disagree with everything I'm writing in a year's time. And you just had to give yourself permission, right? To the freedom yeah, to be able to do that. Yeah, because also I had to honor the space that I was at at that particular age, in that particular moment, in that particular experience. And I knew, especially in this, because they do say that if you do Bethel School for three years it's the equivalent of attending a two-hour church service for 26 years that's crazy so if you think about the amount of stuff you can learn from it's 26 a years ago just a lot yeah. of church so you're constantly expanding and growing and you're in an environment that's pushing you to grow for the sake of the kingdom on exponential level so writing a book about dating and i remember saying to my pastor at the time i said i don't i don't know what I'm talking about. I don't have the husband at the end of the book to say, here's how I won him, you know. And he said, oh, so you can't be vulnerable unless there's a victory in it. And I thought, well, yeah, isn't that the whole reason why we would share anything in the first place is the victory. You know, my sense of achievement. You and I are the same on the Enneagram. So that sense of achievement, the finale, the, you know. He was actually, I've been meaning to tell you this. Mm. You hate the Enneagram. No, I don't hate one. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's just witchcraft, but whatever. Sure. Um, I'm kidding. Um, <laughs> I started out as a three, but I've had several people point out they don't think I'm a three. They actually think I'm a one. People who are like skilled oh, in the Enneagram, yeah. which is possible. I haven't totally Could jumped be. ship from the three scenario, but I, I'm leaning Could more toward be. I might actually be a one, which feels like abandonment. I'm terrified. Sorry. terrified. Like, no, it's fine. It's just we probably won't be friends. <laughs> it was... <laughs> It was good while it lasted. Being, yeah. a, being a one is terrifying for me. Why? What? Because, you because mean ones a... are so stringent on getting it right. Right. Which I feel like I don't... It makes me nervous to be able to get it wrong around you. Uh... And there's a three. I'm like, let's just try it out. Let's just try it out. See, work. I identify with that. Yeah. Well, maybe you're just a healthy one. Yeah, that's probably it. Probably just a healthy one. Anyway. <laughs> yeah, sorry, Carrie. I don't know what we're talking about. Your book. But Vulnerable. Writing, you need changing your mind. Be... And so there are things in the first book, and potentially the second book, that I'm like, oh, I probably think differently on that now. Yeah. But I, I, I'm not so strong as, what's his face, who wrote Kiss Dating Goodbye and then had to do a huge 
announcement and a big apology because it had sort of scuppered everyone's livelihood and dating because he didn't agree with dating now he does the Christians just weren't procreating anymore yes yeah, so I realised we off. are no longer going forth and multiplying <laughs> because of my book so I apologise let me do a TED talk let me just rectify this but that's the tension it's the vulnerability of writing and actually I, I was even talking to Bill about this going I'm actually really nervous to write again and I even burst into his office one day and going, well, maybe I'm not a writer. Maybe I wasn't supposed to be a writer in the first place. He said, that's like you saying that you're not supposed to be a female. <laughs> no, okay. But I think there was this sort of, this amount of, the more exposure you get to people reading your books and commenting on your books and giving you feedback, and especially if it's in a, sp- a space of vulnerability, the more you start looking into every sentence you're saying and analysing every sentence you're saying. So you don't feel like you can actually have a blank canvas and feel the freedom to write the way that you can you know my journey was basically what does it look like to write with freedom knowing that you will probably get a huge amount of attack adversity commentary people going mm. people seeing you in a party and going oh it's her she went the way <laughs> yeah but you're fine you just had quotes yeah so you yeah it was fine it's it totally I don't know what you're talking about was it not? Was it vulnerable for you to write a book? No. No, not that one. Because all that stuff had already been posted in public anyway. Oh, so you just. So none of it. It wasn't like this print. new thing that people hadn't seen. Are you before. gonna write again then? Yeah, I'm Are currently you? in the process of starting. <laughs> what do you? You sound very excited about that. What I think you... it's a bit of this stuff, you know. Like it does. It's vulnerable. It's. It feels daunting. Like I don't mm. know what the end looks like yet. So mm. how do I actually win? Mm. that's probably the one in me or the three I don't know the three in me I don't know it's the thing in me that's like yeah. I need to know what victory looks like in order and for me then. to even begin here you know <laughs> anyway how many, so I'm, how many fingers I'm, have I hold <laughs> <up>? <laughs> I'm working through that hopefully I'll get there anyway we listen we've been going for you know hours some time Carrie thank you so much for joining you're me you're welcome it's been a blast let's <laughs> high five shall we I'm sure it was very useful it sure was, it was very handy. It was fun, regardless. You guys, thank you for joining us. Um, hopefully this was not a waste of time. <laughs> <laughs> but you know what? Sometimes it's good to waste some time. Totally. This was definitely worth it. Regardless if anybody else ever sees this, I had a blast. Maybe they won't. <laughs> Bye, guys. If you enjoyed this, we would love to know your thoughts, your feedback, comments below. Is do you guys have poor peripheral vision than others, than women? Um, comment, comment below, we want to know what you're thinking. Share with your friends. Give it a like. Subscribe to the channel. We'll see you guys in the next video. Cheerio.